Hey guys, how you doing today? Uh, thank you for joining us at the podcast. Um, as you can see, I am at the Subi shop today. Uh, they have a variety of different Crocs that, that have different designs and African print. I think this is the only place in Kampala where you can find these type of Crocs. So join us today. We're gonna interview the owners. We're gonna take a look around the shop and see the different styles. Uh, hopefully you guys see something you like. shop today. Uh, as you can see, it's a shop that offers different types of Crocs. Uh, these are the owners right here, TJ and I'm sorry, again, Medina. Medina. Yeah. So we're just here to ask them a few questions about, you know, um, I guess originally, uh, where are you from? So I'm born in the UK. I spent some of my early childhood in Nigeria. My dad is Nigerian. And um, I did my schooling education in the UK, and I've been in the UK most of my life. Um, okay. And I came to Uganda about a year ago, a little over a year ago. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, so, what made you want to come to Uganda and start a business here specifically in Uganda? I was uh, analyzing a range of factors. Mm -hmm. I think that the West has peaked. So UK, US, I think economically, they have had their, the rise of their empire and the empire is now in the decline. Okay. So um, that kind of idea mixed with um, what I think is an upper, an up and coming <laughs> continent. I think Africa is on the rise. So I would rather be located somewhere that's right. rising than somewhere that's um, falling. I looked at a lot of places, South America, Asia, um, and I was also looking for a partner, looking for a relationship. So um, I did, I, I was planning on going to South America first, but I had a really good corporate contract mm -hmm. and I could work remotely. But the time zone for South America to UK would mean I'll be working through the night. It was. The time zone was too crazy. Like a nine hour difference? Yeah, but between five and seven hours, maybe. Okay. The difference, right? So um, I was like, okay, I'm going to look on this longitude and see where it's close. So the first place I went was South Africa. Mm -hmm. So I just started trying to travel around Africa, see, okay, how is the infrastructure? How is the internet? How is, can I, can I live in these types of places? Right. Am I too westernized now? You know, so. Um, I started uh, talking with Medina uh, via dating app, and she was like, come to Uganda, and so I did, and that's kind of how everything started. Yeah, it's the same way I ended in Uganda. Right. My wife, we met on, uh, on Facebook, so. I came, I came, it's a great show, everybody understands. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Okay. Um, and so I guess uh, once you finally got here, did you see like a, a need for Crocs? Because I thought a lot of people in this community wear Crocs, but they don't really yeah. wear like Crocs that have African prints or different designs on them. So the first thing is, one of the things Medina and I connected over was business. So Medina already had a successful shop and she was selling shoes, mm -hmm. mostly Crocs. No, no, no. No, no more Crocs. No more Crocs. Okay. And she was at a point where she was trying to expand. So she got the, her first shop and she'd now gone downtown to wholesale some shoes. So she was managing kind of two businesses. Okay. And I was observing all of this. And what I realized is there's only a few importers and then they distribute the same shoes to everybody. So every shop has the same oh, shoes. Oh, okay. So then if the neighbor reduces the price, then you have it's to reduce it. Right. And the margins get taken by the importers and then everyone else is just getting like 500 shoes, 1,000 shoes, 2,000 shoes on every shoe. Right. So someone could be moving 
500 shoes a week, but they're only making very little profit. Very tiny margin and big investment. Like, mm-hmm. the, the, you know, you're spending uh, half a million to make 50,000, you know? Oh. You know, it's, it's not good math. Right, right. So I was observing this, this economics, and I said, if you have your own shoes that nobody has, then you can determine or control much better your margin. Right. And we can pick, you know, like, we can pick our target market. We can try and, you know, uh, we can do our own price and we can control a lot more things. Mm-hmm. I, I'm part of a business group in the UK, a bunch of guys. We connected over um, uh, COVID and we decided to put money every month into a, a group. Oh yeah, I've heard of it. We would share like ideas and if loan the money to each other and right. just try to like, you know, first of all, way to stay connected while we were all locked on lockdown and to just keep the an entrepreneurial spirit going between us all and whatnot, right? So it's kind of a nice thing. One of the guys in the group is very successful and he advised me and he said, you could go there, you could probably make a lot of money importing shoes and selling them as an importer, fine. But he goes, if you want something lasting, you should build a brand. And uh, I agreed with that. So we start, I started thinking, okay, if she had a brand, how would we do it? How, you know, you just start problem solving. There's a thousand problems to solve. Right. I went online and there's a mass, first of all, 80% of the people here wear Crocs or some type of sandals yeah. or shoes. Yeah. It's the perfect shoe for Africa. If it gets dirty, you can clean them easily. They're inexpensive. You know, they're, they're durable, all of this stuff, comfortable. So I was like, okay, there's a whole market of people selling custom Crocs in America. All these ladies, they they put, they bedazzle them, they put rhinestones, right. they do all this stuff. So I was like, is there a way we can um, take that process and make it more? Um, uh, what what do you call it? Like they're making each shoe one by one. Handmade. How can we uh, more industrialize the process oh, okay. so that we can produce a larger amount and do wholesale shoes and things like that? Make the production more efficient, streamlined. Exactly. Okay. I was trying to go down that route. So I started just experimenting on shoes, even when I was in the UK, different ways of designing. I have a sister who's in fashion and we're an artistic family in our family. So mm-hmm. we, I, I, was, I was ready to, to start designing basically. And I started going through a process. And since then we just keep refining and improving and improving learning new techniques, testing new techniques, to, to now you see the products you have before you. So a nice example, for example, this, this is waterproof and it's got um, Afri- traditional African fabric. This is a Kente style. We have black rhinestones and why, cannot, why can't we represent Africa? With this, like it's a Western kind of fashion, mm-hmm. but with an African uh, twist. Feel, twist to it. Yeah, and you see that. You know, you see people selling modern clothes with African fabric here and there. And you know, I think it looks nice. So why can't we do it with Crocs? So you know, we went through this process, and this is the this is where we got to with it. We imported a bunch of shoes from mm-hmm. China. Uh, that that was a seven week process. It was very, very trialing and testing, and there's lots of problems actually with, with that for this. So yeah, if you just uh, explain to us, you know, the whole shipping process, how you get your product out here. So um, we've got various methods. Right now, we work with wholesalers that do importing, okay. but we've also imported our own shoes. Mm-hmm. What we've done is we sourced in China manufacturers. They will only let you buy in a certain minimum quantity. So you might have to buy 500 pairs or 1,000 pairs or 3,000 pairs. Okay, so there's like a bare minimum in order to place a order. Most of the time, you can buy in smaller quantities. What you'll find is the price becomes unreasonable. Yeah. You, 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 maybe triple or double the cost 
Mm-hmm. By the time they report, then you have to pay your taxes. Right. Things. So, yeah, you have to buy in quantity. So let's say I find this shoe in China and I want to import it. Well, they're going to say, okay, like, we're only going to give you one size 500, one color. Oh, wow. So if you want to get like multiple colors, multiple sizes, all of these things, you have to buy really like in the thousands, which we, we've done. <laughs> we've done. Really? It's okay. not, it, it's uh, like we went through the process, you know, we thought something was going to work in a particular way. Right. We go down this process. It turns out that's not the most efficient way for us now. Um, but you know, we went through. There's a company just up the road called um, Maria Cargos, okay. and they charge per cubic meter from China, and they have a boat leaving every Friday from China coming to Uganda. They're the only guys I know that ship in large quantities. So we ordered like the size of this room, cubic in cubic meters of. Uh, shoes. Oh wow! That's a and word. it took seven weeks. It was an anxiety. Uh, you know, we don't know if we can. We're gonna get our stuff stolen or lost right. on the way. Like you know, you have all these fears. And it was three weeks late. The boat was three weeks late. Mm. So that's a lot of anxiety and things like that. We also import some of our materials. You can't find uh, these rhinestones in New Manila. So you know. It's a good thing and a bad thing. It's a hassle to import them, but it means no one else can copy us. It's very annoying. It's very difficult to, to copy. Okay, so I'm looking at all your different Crocs and they, and they all look very unique, but you guys are the only ones that have this particular style. So how has the community responded to this particular style since you guys are the only ones that are really providing it right now? Um, to tell you the truth, everybody loves it. Mm-hmm. Just that it's not that everyone can afford to to buy at our price. Because right? uh, our price is set from 50 to 100. Mm-hmm. So it takes just that one person who can manage to pay 50,000 or 100,000. But everyone passing there, they really love the shit. Right. Yeah. Okay. Okay. We so just people fall over because they're watching, there's a big step there. <laughs> they're looking at the shoe like this. Oh, uh, and they bang, they fall over. It happens all the time. And right. you love that name. <laughs> but we, I'm coming from UK. Mm-hmm. You know, I know what like the shops look like over there. Like, if you look at our neighbors, they just put their shoes on every inch of their, they okay. hang, there's no space, right? right. They just put their, and there's um this psychological uh, there's psychological factors in a shop. The colours you use, the spacing. Even now, this is too much. It's too cluttered for it me. Has been the same. But there's there's a there's a it's difficult to make a buying decision if there's too much choice. Yeah, this place is nice. Right. So we we wanted we I think we look a little different to other stores, or at least we try to. Mm. And um, people love our stuff. It's just not everyone can afford it. Right, so I guess that's part of the process. If you guys just opened up a business, you're trying to be cost efficient as much as possible, but in time, you know, you'll find different ways to maybe bring your cost down so you can bring the cost down to the uh, consumer. But yeah, it could take time, a lot of trial and error, you know, yeah. so. Uh, it, we, we actually, there's a philosophy around the pricing. If we make our shoes exactly the same as everyone else's, people start not seeing value. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, so we, we purposely want to maintain a little bit of a, it's okay. not crazy money. It's, it's, it's there, plenty there's plenty of shops that sell shoes at our price, yeah. but not many sell crocs right. at that price. Just a little bit more than what Right. Yeah, because fifty k is really not that much. You can go and spend, you know, money on a dinner somewhere and spend fifty k. Easy. Yeah. So yeah. So yeah. I, I, I think you know fifty k from fifty. You said one hundred. Fifty to one hundred. Yeah. And uh, what's the age really of the target audience that you're trying to reach? Um, from twenty five. Like, okay, twenty five years kids. Mm-hmm. From one year up to. Okay, we have kids. Like styles 
from one year to from one from one year to ten. Mm -hmm. That's twenty five to fifty. Then okay. this is one year. Okay. Oh, that one's so nice. like Then this is the some of the Okay. Okay. From one year to ten. So the the this that's from twenty five to fifty. Our pricing. Mm -hmm. Then, uh, then from ten to adults, it's fifty to a hundred. Okay. Yeah. So you guys pretty much have all the ages covered. Anybody from any age can come over here and shop. Our target is most started off as ladies teenagers to let's say 30s mm -hmm. what we found is all of those ladies have kids they want kids shoes and next the moment we put a child's shoe they like yes, they would exactly. rather buy for their child right. than buy for themselves so the kids shoes sell really well and even though they're maybe a bit more expensive the kids shoes are 25 most people can afford that but then it's shoes it's not expensive yeah it's just 25 yeah it's not anyone can afford 25 yeah. so we added the kids shoes mm -hmm. then we had men coming in saying we want well, shoes. shoes but it's not as much it's not as much as women but so we started offering but women. you know the good thing about men is that they buy Mm. Like I could say, a man has no time to bargain. You say, ah, okay, okay this for me, this and this, but then it's. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. There's different behaviors, right? Right. The men yeah, just I like this one. Do you have my size? Yeah, men are much right. quicker. You know, women like to walk around. Women, they be like, ah, okay, yeah. right, this for me, this, for this for me, this. You know. Or, or sometimes I'll come when she's serving someone. And all the shoes are out, you know, on the floor. The ladies, ladies are trying this one, trying that. Yeah. Ladies are so the shop is <laughs> <laughs> The shop is ripped. Let's <laughs> yes, come and they yeah. sit here. They said, try on every shoe. But and we they like, end up buying only two pairs. We like it, you know, we like to interact. Yeah, it's people, very nice. Sit down with them. They tell, we tell them our we story. We become You know, right. and I want them to be comfortable. So you can come and sit. Yeah. Try on every, they bring others. Try your shoes on, it's fine. This is what a shoe store is. You sit down, you try your knees. You try your shoe, you yeah. doesn't do you like it? That's how it is. So. And there are people who like that Because when you come and you try on a shoe, you're going to, to feel the comfort. You're going to feel like um, I need this, I don't need this, you know? Right. It's it's better than just taking the shoe. Mm -hmm. So trying on it's okay. And if you try it on, if you try it on and you feel like you need it, you take it. You take it at home and you like, or oh, maybe someone is going to see you wear it later. You know, you connect us to, yeah. to someone else. Word of mouth is big for us. Yeah, because people say, Where did you get those? Right, and then they. In fact, that's how we get customers. Yeah, and yeah, I see you have on the Sufi shirts. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, can people buy online or can they just have to come to your shop and buy? We do sell online. We, we, we've tried, we're on Jumia. Okay. We've got our own website. We've had two websites. It's a big challenge. Mm -hmm. um, the infrastructure to deliver right, is, a challenge. is a big challenge. Um, we've tried various ways. As of right now, the only way really to buy online is to, if you see something you like, you message us, it will come to our website. I've tried um, Shopify and you can't really sell internationally or you can but what i'd have to do is send bulk to right. a warehouse that houses it that's now an ongoing cost marketing so we're trying to grow into that um, and go country by country so right. like, we've got our eyes on kenya and i have family in nigeria that um, can help so the idea is we want to represent africa we want to manufacture here actually Right, you know, we're not able to do it yet, but we want to manufacture here and then export to the world. <laughs> the world is wearing Crocs. The world loves these types of shoes, and they just the same way they like to put African style on other things. Why not us as well? Right. So I would like to be a competitor to Crocs and you know export and manufacture. 
Well, yeah. I'm behind the scene today, but I would love to ask Madina. You've done this business before downtown mm -hmm. or in another kind of crops. I yeah. know the usual ones. No, they're not the yeah, yeah, not this one. Mm -hmm. I know the other ones we usually enjoy, the cheaper ones. <laughs> <laughs> so how was the business downtown and comparing it to this now, the more modernized one? How is the profit going? How is it compared to the downtown thing? Okay, um, to tell you the truth, at first, like, remember, my, my other business is in Kanyanya. Yeah. Like, I had a big one in Kanyanya then, like your mother lived on it, so that yeah, yeah. income. So here, um, in Kanyanya, I was doing retail. Mm. People used to buy, like they could buy, they could come and buy as many as they come. But if you count, you can you you feel like you sold ten pairs when you have only ten thousand. Like, think about it, ten pairs. You have only ten thousand. Yeah. yeah, but right now you sell a shoe and you have a fixed one. Like, you know, this I think this is better. This is better than better than the shoe of Kanye. But still, they both sell. How are the taxes? I know how you are. A, is, I'm, I'm, I'm employed, <laughs> so they literally cut half of my salary in taxes. So, how is taxing with business? I've tried business before I failed. <laughs> we're, we're in our first year, so yeah. we still haven't had the process of um, uh, uh, actually going through our taxes, but we're not yet profitable mm. overall. So our expenses were, would mean that uh, for the first year we wouldn't pay tax anyway. Because yeah. we've, we've, we've spent more than we've uh, got back. The renting of the shop, the importation, right. all this stuff, we have a lot of stock. So we haven't yet, we're not yet in a position to, oh, to pay our tax. But we're, we're on top of it, we have licensing, mm -hmm. right? We have to have a license and... And it's, um, it's a lot by you. Yeah. Yeah. So really it's crazy. You really don't see a like the fourth year of any new business, really. It takes a few years for you to really build up your clients. How many you know? months did they ask in the beginning for that show? Position they went for three months. Three. Three, months. Three, three months. It's, yeah. it's not bad. Yeah, three months. Um, but and then you know your license is about a hundred and no two two hundred and fifty a year. Dollars uh, or shillings? Shillings. You check. Uh, sorry, two hundred and fifty. Yeah, about a hundred. About hundred and fifty dollars. Yeah, for a year. Okay. Yeah, but then you have. <laughs> you, then, then you have. Um, so when we started building, mm -hmm. uh, we were, I'll, say, I'll tell you the story. We were looking for a place, downtown, a nice place. We had the brokers looking for us. One broker found this place and another broker was told, we've now found our place, don't stop looking for us. So, fine. As we acquired this place and we started building the shelves and everything, that broker went to the KCCA Oh, brought 10 officers <laughs> with guns here. Where's the Mozungu? <laughs> oh my goodness. So, like they thought it's like, you know, yeah. you also get a problem. Like, yeah. So <laughs> we had the, they said that we needed a license to put shelves up in our store. Like, we, where, where did we We were now breaking in here, yeah. and, we, and the Mozungu has to pay. Of course. So we were, Going back and forth with them, luckily the management were here and they came and they said They have, they have a right to do that they, The licensing for all of the stuff you're talking about is, is either we have it or they have it mm. We showed them our papers, they showed them their papers and they went and they were so angry like, the, yeah. And the guy was waiting for his cut The, the, block the broker who called them he, So the idea is they'll shake us down for money then the bro exactly. Because he brought them They'll give him a, a drink so right, right, to shake us down, and it's intimidating when there's guys with guns in your shop. Right, yeah. right. Like, it's not a like, comfortable, like... friendly. Ah, oh, my brother. No, no, no. Yeah, like, yeah, it's, yeah. it's hostile. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so. But I think it's all really Yeah. 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 All right, guys. That's going to conclude our show for today. But I'd like to thank you guys for having us in your shop. Uh, 
If you guys have liked you know, what you've seen today, please hit the like and subscribe button. And please come down to the Subi shop if you want to give your address on where, mm. where you're at, how people can come and visit. Okay, we are at Uganda Road, Nankila Building. The shop number is here is your one. Yeah, wow. and hit us up online. We have a YouTube channel. Yeah, we'll share the link. Yeah, we'll share the link down at the yeah. bottom. Yeah, so if you want to contact us, we can help you in any way. All right, we'll see you guys next time. Peace. If you guys don't have smoking sandals, that could be better than this. You should see it.